This word evolved is a very tricky word. I've done over 90 debates and about 7,000 radio and TV call-in talk shows, and I've learned how to win the debate on evolution in the first five minutes. It is so easy. If somebody says, do you believe in evolution? I say, well, what do you mean? Well, you know, evolution. No, which one are you talking about? There are six meanings to the word. Are you talking about cosmic evolution, the origin of time, space, matter? I don't believe in that with the Big Bang. We'll talk about that in a minute. Are we talking about chemical evolution? Because according to the Big Bang theory, the Big Bang, you know, produced hydrogen and maybe some helium. Well, then how do we get all these other elements? Do you want me to believe uranium evolved from hydrogen? They'll say, well, yeah, fusion. You have fusion in stars. Yeah, but you can't fuse past iron very well. Number two, you've got a chicken and an egg problem here because you have to have the stars to make the elements and the elements to make the stars. Which one came first? Which brings up, of course, stellar evolution. How did the stars form? You know, nobody's ever seen a star form. Scientists don't even have a clue how a star could form. No even good theories about star formation. We cover more on that on video seven. But we see stars blow up all the time. It's called a nova or a supernova if it's a big one. Well, that happens all the time. But we never see one form. And yet there's enough stars out there that we know about that everybody on planet Earth, every single individual, can personally own 11 trillion stars to yourself. Those are the ones we know about. We don't know about the ones that we don't know about. <laughs> Fourthly, there's going to have to be organic evolution. Life has to get started from non-living material. Nobody has a clue how that could happen. Then we're going to have to have what's called macroevolution. That's where an animal changes to a different kind of animal. Did you know nobody has ever seen a dog produce a non-dog? Never. You may get a big dog or a little dog, but you're going to get a dog every time. And it could be that the dog, the wolf, and the coyote had a common ancestor. I wouldn't argue about that. They probably did. But every five-year-old kid knows they're the same kind of animal. I'll show you. Is anybody in here five or six? Who's five or six years old? Anybody? How about, we got one? Oh, okay. How old are you, buddy? Six? I want you to take a test. Here we have a dog, a wolf, a coyote, and a banana. Which one is different than the rest of them? The banana. Give him a hand. All right. Very good. <laughs> we have college professors can't figure that out. Okay. Tell you what I want you to do. When we're done, I want you to go out to the table out in the hallway and you can pick out any free video or DVD you want. Okay? We've got a bunch of videos and DVDs about dinosaurs and stuff out there. The Bible says the animals are going to bring forth after their kind. Now, Charlie Darwin wrote a book on the table down here called Origin of Species. See, a dog and a wolf are the same kind of animal, but they're different species. He fooled everybody by changing the word from kind to species. We'll get into more of that on video four. Lastly, we have what is called microevolution. This is changes within the kinds. Now, that one happens. I'll go along with number six. I think animals can produce a whole variety of offspring. You know, long hair, short hair, long-legged, short-legged. That happens. But the first five are purely religious. That's not science. We never observe any of those. So if you want to win the debate on evolution, simply define exactly what you're talking about. And you'll find all they ever give are examples of number six, which there's no argument about it. It happens. But then they imply that that is somehow magically evidence for the other five, and it is not. The teachers are taught, though, be sure to stress to the students that the earth is billions of years old. Make sure the kids believe this. Now, I happen to be a little old-fashioned. I think in science class, we should be teaching science things we can observe and study and test and demonstrate, things like the first law of thermodynamics. The first law of thermodynamics tells us matter cannot be created or destroyed. Well, everything's made out of matter, so if matter cannot be created or destroyed, then how did the world get here? We're here, you know. So that leaves only two choices. Somebody made the world, or the world made itself. There's no other choice. Well, there are a few out there on the lunatic fringe who will tell you, we're not really here at all. We just think we're here. Okay, you can forget about those folks, right? We're here. So either somebody made the world like the Bible says, God created it, or the world just made itself like the humanists believe. It just is self-existing and not created. Well, if the world just made itself, how could this happen? Boy, the devil thought about that for a long time. And finally, one day, he came up with the Big Bang Theory.